Hello everyone, we have another NHL trade to discuss. We have three trades to talk about here. Not as significant as the ones we had last night, but some pretty decent ones here, as we have a deal between the Oilers and the Coyotes, the Ducks and the Canadians, and the Capitals and the Leafs. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Intent Hockey Channel. Before we begin this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. Thank you for all of your support. I've never been able to do this without you guys. So if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below discussing all that was discussed in today's video. And also don't forget to stay tuned for tomorrow's live stream video at 9 p.m. Pacific time, 12 30 p.m. Eastern time, discussing all the live trade deadline deals that go down. So don't forget to stay tuned for that. Uh, but we have three trades to discuss today. Uh, lots of interesting ones. We'll start with the first one that went down. It's a simple trade. The trade is as follows. You all Edmondson with 50% of his contract retained, which bumps his cap it down to Andrew $75,000, was traded by the Washington Capitals to the Toronto Maple Leafs in exchange for a 2024 third round pick, which is the Islanders, and a 2025 fifth round pick, which is the Blackhawks. So this is a decent trade, in my opinion, for both these teams. Uh, for the Capitals, they were never going to bring back Edmondson. He was brought in to be a solid stabilizing third pair defenseman, help them make the playoffs. They're not in a playoff spot right now, and it doesn't look like they will make the playoffs this year, so they're trying to move off on their pending UFAs. Edmondson is that. He was a hot commodity, given the fact that his his cap it was already so low that they could retain him to being sort of like an entry-level contract. So a lot of teams had interest. They do move him to Toronto and they paid a third and a seventh to get him in the offseason. They're able to get a third and a fifth in return. So it's a pretty good uh, pickup there for the Capitals. Third round pick is the Islanders. It might be right around the middle of the third round. Fifth round pick is the Hawks. So it will be one of the first picks of the fifth round. So they get a couple of really good picks in the Edmonton deal. And this really does help them sort of build some more draft capital for them. So it's really good pickup there for the Capitals and they are able to actually improve on the return that they gave up for Edmondson in the offseason. So that's a very good pickup there for the Capitals. Meanwhile, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, this is a fantastic pickup. Uh, Edmondson can play the left side. He can play the right side. He's a very fantastic shutdown third pair defenseman. He helped the Montreal Canadiens a couple of years ago get to the cup final. Uh, he's a very fantastic player. He has dealt with a ton of injuries over the past couple of years, which has slowed him down. So far this year in Washington, he's had 44 games played, putting up a goal in six points. He has dealt with some injuries again this year. If he can stay healthy, he'll be a fantastic upgrade for the Toronto Maple Leafs third pair. Uh, so this is a fantastic move for the Leafs. It gives them some more added defensive depth uh, for the playoffs. It's a fantastic move for the Leafs, in my opinion. Now, they do have a really crowded blue line. They just put Will Lagerson on waivers. We'll talk about that in a future video. Uh, but definitely, uh, they have a ton of defense. I would not be overly surprised if one or two of them wind up getting moved. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But a fantastic pickup there for the Leafs. Uh, they are able to get Edmondson, who's a solid third pair defenseman. And in exchange, they only give up a third and fifth round pick. So I'm not sure if this is the last move that we're going to see the Leafs make. There's still a lot of talk that they could make another move, uh, adding a right shot defenseman, so we'll have to wait and see, but either way, a fantastic third pair defenseman in Edmondson is going to the Toronto Maple Leafs, and a really affordable cap it of under $900,000, so very good stuff there for the Leafs. Then we saw a prospect swap between the Montreal Canadiens and the Anaheim Ducks. The trade is as follows. It's a one-for-one -one deal. The Ducks acquire Jan Nishak from the Montreal Canadiens in exchange for Jacob Perot. Uh, this is a fantastic move for both sides. Uh, both prospects are able to get fresh starts. For Nishak, he was a center left winger. Uh, he was taken in the second round of the 2020 draft by the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, he's in the second year of his ELC. He's played the last couple of years over in Laval. Uh, last year put up nine points in 40 games. This year's put up 20 points in 48 games. He's looked like a fantastic prospect there uh, for the Montreal Canadiens. I think he could eventually be like a solid third line forward so this is a fantastic swap for the Anaheim Ducks uh, they have a lot of really good forward prospects so I think Misha could eventually be a solid third line forward and then he should be able to add to another really good prospects there for the Anaheim Ducks so it's a pretty good pickup there for Anaheim to get Misha and I think this is going to be a fantastic pickup there for Anaheim you know for the Montreal Canadiens they get Jacob Perot Perot was also taken in that 2020 draft he was a first round pick though late first round pick instead of early second round pick uh, he is a right winger he has been playing over in the AHL over the past couple of years he has one game of financial action, putting up no points a couple of years ago. Last year, put up 19 points in 48 AHL games. This year so far is only one point off of his point total in 17 less games, so he's played 31 AHL games and put up 18 points, so it looks like a fantastic piece. He's not a usual first-round pick, and he may not be a high-level player, but I think he could eventually be a solid middle six forward for the Montreal Canadiens. That's another decent prospect that the Canadiens are able to nab, so a really good prospect swap there for the Canadiens and the Ducks. Both the guys were 2020 uh, draft picks. Uh, Perot a late first First, Mishak at early second, and both sides wind up getting swapped, and hopefully the fresh starts can help them uh, translate into NHL success. So really good stuff there for those two players. And then we saw one more trade that I'm going to talk about here today between the Edmonton Oilers and the Arizona Coyotes. Now these two teams hooked up on a deal last year that sent Bukestad to Edmonton, and now they sent another.
Now they're pinning you off fate to Edmonton. The trade is as follows. The Edmonton Oilers acquired Troy Stetcher with his full cap hit and a 2024 seventh round pick, the Boston Bruins, from the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for a 2027 fourth round pick. So this is a pretty good deal for both sides. For the Coyotes, we'll start with them first. They move a seventh round pick, which they have a ton of draft capital anyway, so I don't think moving a seventh round pick is going to hurt them. And they move Troy Stetcher. Uh, so Stetcher was never coming back because it's all third part defenseman, but he was on the final year of his deal. I definitely thought he would definitely be moved before a deadline. And in the return, and they get a 2027 fourth round pick. So that's a ways down the road. I mean, we're nearing the 2024 draft, so that's over three draft years away. So that's a long ways away. The Coyotes by that time could be moving that sort of a pick to try and upgrade their team. Uh, but either way, they get a fourth round pick and a long ways time uh, in exchange for a player who they were not bringing back. So it's a pretty good pick up there for the Coyotes. You now for the Oilers, they don't lose any huge draft capital. They actually improve. They get another draft pick for this year. So that's a really good pick up there for the Oilers to get a seventh round pick for this year, even though they have to move a fourth round pick way down the line. I think it's pretty okay for the Oilers. And they also get a depth defenseman in Troy Stetcher. Stetcher's a really good third pair right shot defenseman. He can play a really good third pair minutes. Uh, I'm not sure if he will play on a third pair consistently. He may be a seventh D in uh, Edmonton, but still, it's a really good pickup there for the Oilers last year. Uh, splitting time with the Coyotes and the Flames after he was dealt the deadline. Stetcher put up three goals and 14 points in 81 games. So far this year, has been more of a spare forward in Arizona, but five points in 47 games. I think if he was to get into the lineup, he should be a solid third pair uh, guy who could put up some offensive numbers. So that's a pretty good pickup there for the Oilers. It adds to their blue line. It gives them a little bit more depth and it doesn't really cost them a whole bunch. So it's a really good pickup there for the Oilers to add to their blue line and it's a really good move there for the Coyotes to get a future draft pick for a guy who they weren't bringing back. So lots of good moves over these three deals. I think that the Leafs do win the Edmonton deal given the fact of how good a value they can get for Edmonton. I know the third and fifth round pick they had to give up, but Edmonton at $875,000 is a fantastic pickup there for the Leafs, although I think the Caps may look pretty good in that deal. Uh, the Canes and the Ducks prospect swap, I do think that the Canadians won, given the fact they have the higher level prospect than Jacob Perot. But I think this is a really good prospect swap, and getting both those guys fresh starts is very fantastic for Perot and Mishak, so I think this is a pretty much a win-win deal in my opinion, but I think the Canadians may have a little bit of an edge on the Ducks in that deal. And as for the Oilers and the Coyotes, I do think the Coyotes might have won that deal, being able to get a fourth round pick a couple of years down the road in exchange for Stetcher, but adding Stetcher to the Oilers blue line is a fantastic pickup there for the Oilers. So definitely, I'll have to get your thoughts on who you think won these deals down in the comment section below. But that's all I'm going to talk before today remember to like this video and if you like it remember to subscribe down below thank you for all your support i would have never been able to do this with all of you guys don't forget i also do a blog talk about news rumors analysis and for that so if you check that out leave a link to that down in the description below don't forget to stay tuned for my live trade deadline video tomorrow uh as i'll be talking about the trade deadline so don't forget to stay tuned for that and i'll come to you guys all for the next video see you guys soon